welcome to the Murder She Shed. My name is Holly, and this is the place you hear true crime right from my she shed. So, come on in. Make yourself at home. Only thing, I'm not in my she shed today because it's cold outside, but I'll let you visit me with in here with my green screen. It's not really exciting, but hey, we're not cold. Before we begin, I want to ask you if you will hit that like and subscribe so more people can find my channel, hopefully. This is a pretty rough case today, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a warning that there is child abuse in this video. So if this is a trigger for you, just click off this video, go to my channel, The Murder She Shed, and watch a different video. All right, guys. Although this little boy passed away in October of 2019, it just now went to trial. The mom and then boyfriend had a trial a couple of days ago on March 4th, 2022, and were found guilty of manslaughter and murder, and this was in South London. Carell Matthews, who was only two years old, look at him. He was just an adorable, a precious baby. So sweet. Well, he suffered 41 rib fractures, internal bleeding, some injuries and bruises to his liver and his penis, and a four centimeter cut on his liver. Due to the abuse of his mother, Felicia Shirley, 24, and her then partner, Kimar Brown, 24. Paramedics were called to the family home just before 3 p.m. on October 20th, 2019 to find Carell dying just a month and a day after his second birthday. Despite the efforts of medical staff, they were unable to save him. Audio footage was filmed on the mother's phone after she had set it up to record what might be going on in the flat out of her earshot. She seemed to think her boyfriend was cheating on her. So she was trying to get that on her phone of him contacting other women. Even though this mom could look back on the audio and see that her little boy was getting abused by this man, she did nothing about it. She was more worried about who he was cheating with than she was her own son. But I guess she beat him some too. In one particular incident played to the court from July 13, 2019, Kamar could be heard telling Carell, no more crying. Stop, stop crying. What are you crying for? He can be heard repeating this again and again, getting louder and louder. The court then heard what sounded like a slapping noise on the recording before Kamar commenced to mock little Carell crying. What a monster. A minute later, Kamar tells the toddler to come here, which is followed by the sound of a slap, making Carell cry even louder. Felicia could also be heard in numerous other clips Throughout the recordings, Carell could be heard being told to shut up by both of them. And on one occasion was heard apparently being hit seven or eight times in a 10 second period of time. On one occasion, Kamar inflicted several blows on Carell before telling him, you're running all the fun. Carell who was still nonverbal at two years old, could be heard screaming and crying. Another recording captured Felicia striking her son and causing him to cry in distress. Carell did not attend the nursery. He stayed at home all the time with his mom. Um, she did not work. I guess Kamar was a rapper, so... He didn't work that much. He was at her flat a lot, too. When Felicia was pregnant with Carell, it was an unplanned and unwanted pregnancy. 
Although Corel's father was not around much for Felicia's pregnancy, he did show up when Corel was born. Corel was born to preemie and had to stay in a special care baby unit for 11 days after his birth. After taking little Corel home, it was said that his mom started becoming depressed and felt unsupported. And she also felt like she was not bonding with little Corel like she should. Corel's father would come around occasionally, but it always ended in a physical assault. It was said that she began to cease all contact with Corel's father once Kamar came into the picture. This is a video of little Corel during some of the happier times of his short life. He is the most adorable little thing. Just listen to the giggles. Mm. Hey to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Is that the only thing you have to say, cheese? <laughs> then in November 2018, Felicia started a relationship with Kamar, and at this point, supposed accidental injury started occurring to Kareel. In early May, Kareel was brought by ambulance to hospital with a head injury and extensive bruising to the side of his head and face. His mom stated that Kareel had jumped from the sofa onto the metal edge of a high chair where he'd hit his head. And she changed that story a couple more times. In late May, Felicia contacted the GP by phone worried about a swelling in Corel's scrotum area. She was offered an appointment for that afternoon, but did not bring him. In fact, she called a couple of times on this one issue. Kamar was well known to the police for offenses of robbery, assault, burglary, possessing weapons, possessing weed, breaching bail conditions, and domestic abuse. He had been assessed by the probation service as a high risk of harm to the public, to rival gang members, and to previous or future partners. In July of 2019, police were called to the home for domestic abuse. When the police got to Felicia's flat, she denied any of it happened. Crail was in the house with them when they were fighting as well as Kamar's child. Although police knew that this man could be a danger to any future partners and they seen two children in that home, they did not report anything back to Children's Services. So Children's Services didn't even know that he was pretty much living with her at this point. In September 2019, just a month before his death, Corel spent a night with his grandparents. They would later tell police that he didn't seem to be himself. It was reported that he wouldn't settle, he wouldn't eat, and he just pretty much whined all night and was much quieter than usual. And the same thing happened in October, but on this occasion... Corel was reluctant to even get out of the car to go into his mother's flat. Corel had his ribs crushed or broken by blows within four weeks before October 20th, supposedly in five separate incidents. Think about it. This little boy had 41 rib fractures. 41, guys. As a nurse, I know that even one rib fracture is so painful that a person has trouble breathing. And this little boy, for a month, incurred one rib fracture after another. He was already in pain, and they would beat him and add some more, and then some more, five different times. 
I can't even imagine how much pain this poor child must have been in. Awful. Just really awful. And she knew that he was in this pain because he was crying out and begging them to stop on these videos. And yet, that they let the abuse keep happening. His own mother let it keep happening. It was said that the recordings are so awful, they can't even be released to the public. Then, on October 20th, his ribs were crushed for the last time. This killed him. Alicia called a non-emergency number on that fatal night. And here is a piece of that recording. I'll let you listen to it. Hello, you're through the NHS One 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 service. And what is that I can help you with today? Um, basically, Carol, he's been acting really funny, like his body's floppy, and his eyes is rolling back, and his chest is like coming out, like he can't breathe, and he's not responding properly. Okay, so he's, is he awake at the moment? Yeah, but it's like he'll be laying down and then he lashes out and then he's just not, he looks like he's not here, basically. His eyes are just oh. rolling back. Based upon that information that you have just given me there, it is advised I do arrange an emergency ambulance. During the trial, the mom would blame Carell's death on the 911 responder, stating she gave her incorrect instructions while performing CPR. And this had caused injury to Carell and that it had led to the death of her child. The CPR instructor did give her the wrong instructions. She gave her adult CPR for a child, and the child CPR is different. But I don't care. That still could have not done that kind of damage that was done to that child. And you, how are you going to explain away all these recordings? Paramedics sent to the flat described Felicia as hysterical when they arrived, and they said she threw herself on the floor and just cried. Kamar was described as just looking at his phone, and as they were taking Corel to the hospital, he was just staring at his phone. No big deal. Not only this, but they would later. The police would later find out that during, while she was calling this non-emergency number, that she was Googling steakhouses and the best place they could go out to eat while her son lay unconscious. I guess they were going to have a dinner date after they took him to the emergency room. You know, there's not many cases that made me mad, but child abuse cases infuriate me to the bone. Even if my children's dad did something to his children, that man would live to regret it. I'm sorry. It's not happening. It wouldn't happen for me as a mother. And so I don't understand how mothers can let a man do this to their kids. One witness described Felicia shouting, my baby, my baby, he's the only person who loves me. When she found out her son was dead, Krell was known as a happy, smiling little baby. Even through all the abuse he endured, he was still able to put a smile on his face. This is a heartbreaking case of an adorable little boy whose little life was lost due to the actions of a monster that should have never been brought into this little boy's life. And he was brought there by his own mother. Such a shame. I know little Corel has his angel wings now and is living a beautiful life in heaven. Guys, I know this was a sad case and a hard case to listen to. All my child abuse cases on my channel have been extremely hard for me to even research. But I believe Unless this is brought out of the darkness into the light, nothing can change. Nothing can be done to help these children.
Child abuse is at its highest rate ever, and changes need to happen. And so I feel that bringing it out, people can no longer deny it. They have to realize it's happening, accept it, and maybe, just maybe, we might see some changes to get these kids out of these situations after repeated offenses, and they know that they are in bad homes. Something has to be done, guys. So that's why I put these cases on my channel. I'm hoping for change. All right, guys, um, I will let y'all go, and I hope y'all have a blessed week, and just take care of yourself, take care of your little children, and I love y'all, and, well, just come back and see me, and hit that like and subscribe, so you can come right into my she shit every week with me. All right, bye.